Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers, doing a live stream here, coming off of a bounce back day in the stock market. Also had some big news come out today as far as uh, Biden's uh, plans for infrastructure and everything else that's going on in the market. So we've got some good news, I think, at least over the long term. And I thought I would just hop on and talk a little bit about it. So let's take a look at today, where things are going. Uh, let me get back to my charts here. All right, so I think the bell just rang, or if not, it's very close to uh, ringing. And what we have is S&P finished the day at 0.37% up. Dow a little bit down, NASDAQ though, which is the big one for me, plus 1.54%, Russell 2000, which has lost a ton of momentum lately, that was up 1.6%, oil under 60, uh, relatively surprising there, gold, silver still under 25, and then on the 10-year, uh, you know, near the end of the day, you can see this, it started at red and eked its way up to green, 1.75% uh, uh, on the 10-year, uh, you know, that spooked things in the past, and yet here we are today, it got a little lift, uh, you can compare it to the QQQ, uh, just eyeballing it, it looks like things went up on the 10-year and down on QQQ, but... Generally speaking, a really good day uh, for the market just to see some of that uh, rebound, right? Uh, particularly in technology and growth. If we look at a quick chart, this is what I was looking at before I got uh, online with you guys. If we look at a quick chart, this is QQQ. I don't know if it shows, you guys can't read this because it's at the top of the screen, but it's QQQ. We are in year-to-date look a daily year to date. And, um, you know, this bottom, which was on March 8th at 299.94, just below 300. And we peaked up to 321. Then we've had some sag and today at 320. So when you look at a chart like this, and I'm not, you know, an expert uh, chart person, but I would say that uh, it's, we're starting to get some evidence here that 3.8 was the bottom, at least for the QQQ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me pull a stock like Amazon and see if that's about the same. Yeah, Amazon 3.8, definitely a bottom there. Uh, and it has popped up since then. Uh, Etsy is a stock I own. It's sort of floundering lately. It looks like 3.8 was their bottom. Uh, and finally, end phase, which is one that took a big hit in my portfolio, uh, March 8th uh, at 132 and now at 162. So I don't want to get ahead uh, of things and suggest that, uh, you know, that the bottom's in and it's all up for here. It's not what I'm saying. What, I, what I'm saying is it's a good sign that on March 8th, uh, was a distinct bottom in the recent history, and we're getting further away from that with days like today. So every stock performs different. Every stock is independent. The QQQ is just uh, one guideline I use because it uh, encompasses a lot of stocks that I follow. So, um, you know, for me, I'll take it as good news. Then on the flip side, we had the, uh, the Biden infrastructure plan come out. And, and you know, it, it's good news. Just keep in mind it's a plan. Hasn't been voted on yet. It's it's far from rock solid. Uh, but I think overall, the sentiment of the news was that, hey, you know, the president's coming in and we can probably agree that all politicians in general are interested in spending big on infrastructure, right? Uh, and then the president is going to create a bill that he hopes will pass. So he has to, you know, mark it up and make changes and work with uh, the different members so that it can get through with the yes vote. But considering where he's starting at the very high point, uh, and it's a pretty big bill, 
Uh, infrastructure definitely is going to get uh, a big impact. So if you're following at home, I think a lot of these stocks have already reacted to it. I saw like Cleveland Cliffs, which makes the pellets for steel. That thing was like one of the high performing stocks of the day. Let me see if I can show that to you. Trending tickers, most act right here. Cleveland Cliffs, so they make the pellets that form steel. I don't know what the terminology is. I'm not a steel guy. Let me see if I can tell you though real quick. Uh, iron ore pellets, okay? So they operate three iron ore mines um, and they produce the material of I grades of iron ore pellets that are used uh, to help create steel. So obviously infrastructure, lots of steel being produced uh, under Biden's plan. And that thing went up 16% today. So, you know, if you're sleeping, you might have missed it on a play like this. I certainly was not in this play. Um, but you do have some other steel companies if you're interested uh, that you can look at like uh, X, which is United States Steel. Uh, but thinking about other names like um, John Deere, which is not just farming, is also construction equipment. They were only up 0.23% today. Let's check on Caterpillar. I didn't look at these. Uh, if I can spell Caterpillar correctly, which I didn't. There, I'll just do cat. Why am I trying to spell Caterpillar? Uh, Caterpillar actually down. So that's interesting. Um, I was going to say I think some of these stocks have run up because I saw the Cleveland Cliffs, but as I take a deeper look at plays like this, uh, perhaps not. Um, so, you know, poke around. Just understand that it is going to take a long time, likely a long time, uh, certainly months, for Biden's plan to be approved uh, and get through all the approval process before it, it comes into fruition. And then once that money uh, is approved, it takes a little bit longer to sneak out to all the parties. So there's time if you have a big play on this bill, there's, a, there's still time to get in. Uh, just make sure you don't pay overabundance on prices, right? Because we've seen what happens when stocks are inflated, uh, how quickly they can come down. And while they're bouncing back up on today's news, uh, you want to try to get greedy a little bit in terms of the price you pay. Uh, whatever your favorite fundamental is, I would study it very closely on the stocks you're interested in right now and try to make sure you're at least getting uh, close to a historical average on valuation. So whether you're into price to sales, you know, I'm pretty strong on EPS and PE ratio. I still believe in that metric. Uh, but, you know, whatever your metric is, you want to go back in history and make sure that you are paying a fair value for it, even if the infrastructure bill is expected to do good things for you. One uh, more thing, two more things, actually, I'm going to call out and then I'll get into the questions. I see Andy's here. LD and Derek, good to see you guys. Um, I just wanted to cover one thing that I thought was interesting in the Biden bill. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar, you know, he's coming after corporate, uh, corporate taxes. And so this is from Reuters. I'll, this is called Biden kicks off effort to reshape U.S. economy. All right. But the point I wanted to bring up was that his plan, the plan would increase the corporate tax rate to 28% from 21%. And perhaps most importantly, guys, he wants to change the tax code to close loopholes that allow companies to move profits overseas, according to a 25-page briefing. So this is big for one um, particular reason, and I, and I don't know the details, and I'm not an expert on legislative law by any stretch of the imagination, but um, if he is going to go after stock earnings, okay, so not necessarily like EPS, 
But there's been talk in, before Biden got into place as the president that instead of taxing corporations on revenue within the United States, which they can use all sort of uh, tricks and accounting uh, things so that they can go move it off seas, uh, Biden has proposed in the past that he would tax um, corporate profits as they relate to stocks. So let's just say not necessarily earnings per share, but when a company reports earnings, that's where the tax would come off. So if we had a lemonade stand and it was publicly traded and uh, our total earnings, uh, let's just say it was $100 and we had 100 shares, so that was a, that was a $1 EPS per share, right? So that $100 would set your tax rate as a corporation, that's a very interesting approach uh, when you get into the Amazons and Googles of the world and billions of dollars that, that work on that way. It also uh, leads, you know, all these corporations, the first thing they look for is how to get out of these things, right? Like as soon as the tax code comes down, every uh, big name accountancy firm is going to spend all of their resources to figure out Okay, let's read the tax code and figure out how can we save our customers money, aka get them to pay less taxes. Well, wouldn't it be interesting if Google's, Microsoft's, you name it, um, started to report less earnings and fill back into buying more companies or something like that? So there will be a waterfall effect to this if it goes through. Um, and if it really does boil down to uh, share price earnings, then whew, you're going to see a dramatic change in the way uh, that companies report. And the, the EPS line could be drastically changed uh, as a component of valuation uh, going forward. It's all speculation in my head, and it certainly isn't going to change tomorrow. Uh, but you would see from a tax, uh, if you think of 28% tax, if Google had a billion dollars, you know, they can either pay a uh, billion dollars in revenue or earnings. They could either pay 28% directly to Uncle Sam, or they could write off the billion dollars by purchasing another company. Now, that wouldn't be good for the EPS, but it would be good for writing off earnings. Um, so it's something to think about. Again, not gonna change tomorrow, but I found it relatively interesting that that was gonna be uh, potentially the way that Biden goes into this. All right, so uh, let's uh, pause here and catch up with everybody. Um, Andy doesn't think the market bottomed out yet. I don't necessarily uh, disagree with that, and, and it's way too early to tell, uh, but I think the short-term uh, short term news is very good that we're, you know, I wouldn't even say we're far above March 8th, but we've been bouncing above it. Um, I agree with uh, Andy in the sense that I, I think we will see more red days, absolutely. I mean, that's almost guaranteed. Um, and it's going to be a while before we have fundamental uh, data that would change the stock price, right? So the, the really downside with the March 8th uh, crash, or not even crash, but pullback, was that that occurred in the midst of Q4 earnings season with some uh, stocks had already reported earnings, many stocks had already reported earnings, and um, so now we don't have earnings for a while. Uh, so there's not gonna be a ton of uh, revenue data that's confirmed by company accountants to come in and support stocks uh, if there is more melting. Uh, okay, Andy goes on to say in the next couple months, the recovery stock might rise again and people pull money out. Um, I, you know, the tech one is interesting for me because uh, he's mentioning about recovery stocks and pulling out of tech, which is hard to disagree with because that's certainly been the activity here so far. Um, I, I, I honestly think that pulling out of the stock market, pulling money out of the stock market is our bigger risk right now 
from the retail investor standpoint, uh, I've mentioned this many times on the channel, but the concept of uh, COVID vaccinations, uh, regular vacations, uh, regular consumer spending, uh, is just gonna leave behind less money to invest, certainly much less than the pace that the average Joe threw into the stock market last year. So money coming out in general, I think is a concern on the tech side. For me personally, I'm still uh, not only in tech, but I continue to buy, manage down on my tech uh, holdings wherever possible and wherever it makes sense, uh, because I just believe that long-term, uh, you know, which I'm a long-term investor, long-term tech outperforms recovery any day of the week, uh, or excuse me, not any day of the week, uh, any year uh, going forward, but you do have to be careful with your valuations. Derek says, hi, how are you doing? Um, Andy, what do you think about Walgreens? It will benefit from vaccine and business. Uh, let's take a look at Walgreens. It's an interesting stock, one that I haven't uh, really stared at too much. Let me get my screen set up here. All right, I think they're WBA. Yep. So with Walgreens, Annie's making the case, which you know I think is pretty fair, that with vaccines being uh, booked in Walgreens, you know, extra foot traffic, not to mention that foot traffic in general is going to be coming back substantially for almost every brick and mortar store. Here's your one, uh, oh, that's year to date. Here's our uh, one year chart. Basically looks like, you know, last year, round 40, one thing, and this is only a year ago, so it's not full pandemic. Now you're up to 54. EPS at a negative, so no uh, P ratio. If we look at the recent earnings, they have hit, and they hit here. They missed Q2, but that's to be, you know, expected with the stores closing. So this stuff's positive. Um, pretty slim on the earnings last year, always kind of slim compared to revenue, uh, which is surprising for a store like that. Uh, let's see what analysts are thinking for next year, then I'll take a look at uh, tip ranks. I've always, by the way, between these two, we'll compare in a second, I've always been a little more intrigued with CVS, but I believe that CVS has a much higher debt than Walgreens, but I liked CVS because they bought into the Aetna Healthcare, which just seems like a one-to-one -one match, and that's fully integrated now. All right, so current year is 21, 474 last year. Uh, gosh, this year barely adding 15 cents, if the analysts are correct. Uh, and then next year to 524, let's take a look at revenue. Um, you know, 2% minus 1% next year. Not a real strong uh, case for me that I'm feeling good about. I do think, though, to Andy's point, there is uh, an opportunity that they could exceed this because of foot traffic and really just being open. Don't forget, last year, they were probably not even open for a month. Let's see what Tip Rank says just for fun. I don't think I've looked at that one in there before. All right, we've got, looks like these guys are pretty fresh right here. Six days ago, two days ago, and yesterday. They're all holding pretty strong in that $55 range. So I guess for me, just based off this quick look and not knowing if there's any major news coming out about Walgreens. I'll check the headlines real quick. Um, doesn't really say anything, you know, in these first few headlines. I'll say it's probably not much better than a hold. You do get 3.53% dividend as of today's price. Um, you know, so it's affordable in that way. And, and I think drug uh, pharmacies are going to be around for a while. But for me, it's not for me. 
uh, after just this quick look here. On the CVS side, uh, just as I said I would do that comparison, here is one year. Uh, CVS is up. It looks very comparable to Walgreens in the nature that it's up. CVS did post an EPS over the last 12 months of 546, PE ratio of 13. And their earnings, they've hit, hit, and barely hit. Uh, they're in that slim margin game that Walgreens is, so they're both very comparable there. Let's see what we've got. Year ago, EPS at 750, just like Walgreens, this year they're, they're adding a penny, which I'm sure that they'll be, you know, by a little bit more, but not huge expectations. Next year, a little bit better at 811. Um, but man, these things are micro growth, uh, single digit growth, right? So they're huge companies, $280 billion worth of revenue. So to be fair to them, that's hard to grow, but there's not enough here for me to start a new position in either CVS or Walgreens to really match um, how I buy stock. So I don't know what CVS uh, dividend is. So they're offering 2.63% on today's price. On a per share basis, it was slightly higher, but it also uh, costs a little bit more. And just because I did it for Walgreens, I will type CVS into tip ranks here. I'm having, I'm guessing both of these companies, they're going to say pretty flat. Yeah. 15 days ago and up. So no price target, which is kind of a cop out. I hate when people do that. Um, $90 and 102. So you know, depending on who you believe, there's more upside in CVS. I would say both of them, single digit growth forecast is not uh, enough for me to start a new position, if that makes sense. Okay, get a quick drink. And let's see who's up, if I don't mess up the flow here. What do you think about CCIV future? Um, not the kind of stock for me, to be honest. And the number one reason, Omar, is because um, I can't even think of a time that I've bought a stock in a company that hasn't sold a product yet. Just my, you know, I hope it works out for you if you're in it, but I've, I, I can't do that. It's just beyond comprehension for me. Uh, so I will look to see what Tip rank says off to the side. Yeah, they don't have anything either. Oh, because it's still in SPAC land. Um, that's one way to look at it is don't, um, perhaps don't buy it until it changes over to whatever that company's name is, Lumina or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's not for me. Uh, so good luck with it though. Can anyone see the Crocs guys from the shoes went like... Uh, see that Croc. Oh yeah, I got you now, LD. So Crocs is super interesting stock. Uh, I looked at it maybe on a video like a year or a year and a half ago. Um, but you know what one of their secrets is and the pandemic helped is they have a huge healthcare, uh, say like they sell a lot of shoes to healthcare. Not to mention we've had, obviously, the transition indoors. Um, look at that, just slow and steady. I mean, you're just selling shoes, right? Uh, so that looks pretty good. As far as evaluation goes, 1764. This is basically a retail store, so you would kind of expect under 20 for sure, but at least they're doing that. EPS of 456. What I don't know about Crocs for sure is, and I'm going to skip to revenue, you know, is the couple years after the pandemic, is there any good news or is it down from there? But this is speculating uh, $1.39 billion a year ago, current year $1.72 billion, that's 24% increase, and then 22 at 7.3. So almost, uh, you know, almost double digit 
returns in 2022, assuming that they keep making progress. Let's see what the trend is. So this little column on Yahoo is sometimes interesting because it you can just eyeball it, 90 days, 60, 37. Um, you can see, like, you just wanted to see it going up, I guess, is, is the short version. And it does look like next year, 2022, analysts have already added a dollar. So 337, 437, they've already added a dollar to their estimate for next year. Um, so it does look like there's a decent amount of momentum in there. Um, it would be interesting to dig into their analyst report, or not their analyst report, their earnings report. Kind of old on these um, on these numbers. One month can be like an eternity the way the stock market moves these days. But you do have you know mostly buys, couple holds. Uh, so yeah, dig in and see. Perhaps uh, perhaps there's something there, or perhaps it's a dip buy right? You wait for the price to go down a little bit. But it's a much bigger, uh, well-run company than most people would think when you look at those shoes and you're just like, oh, those are just, you know, simple shoes for kids, right? It's, it's kind of where my head goes. But you start getting into their uh, company reports and medical is huge, adult is huge, um, to levels that you that you can't even imagine that, that really nothing to do with the kids shoes at all uh, with health professionals and I'm sure there's dozens of other industries as well so uh, good call out on that one Callum Norris love the videos thanks for all the info you're welcome I appreciate you watching um, how retailers like us going to be affected uh, retailers like us so I don't sell anything uh, really, but uh, if you're saying um, retail stores like Macy's or Target, um, let's do Target because I'm, I'm not a huge Macy's or Nordstrom uh, fan of those stocks just because I think that the, the model is, is dying. Uh, but if I said, you know, we looked at Target last week or the week before on this show, and I like Target. I, I mean, it's slow and steady wins the race from an investing standpoint. But if you do stuff like um, I do, which is kind of like a barbell strategy of safety and security versus more um, upside and risk, Target's a great one for your safety and security because they're going to give you, let me see what they're, uh, I'm not going to go through Target, but I was curious what their dividend yeah, so they got a 1.36% dividend, P ratio today of $23, EPS of $864. I would expect, well, without being the expert on Target, I would expect that the increase in foot traffic, the increase of events such as birthday parties, picnics, cookouts, whatever, road trips, all that crap, uh, is going to be good for Target. Um, that's, that's what I would guess, not to mention some of the other um, categories like lawn care, uh, not necessarily home improvement, but you get the picture. I, I speculate that it'll be a good year for them. Uh, on my one retail play, which is TJX, I'm expecting a good year for them, uh, basically for many of the reasons that I stated, except instead of buying uh, birthday party plates and napkins and cards and gifts, TJX would be, uh, you know, you would buy the new outfit for some summer event that you're going to, uh, where you're looking to save money, but also get a good deal. So um, I think retail is fine. I wouldn't be big on like Best Buy, perhaps. Um, I think that they, they inherited a lot of wins from the pandemic that may not stick around long term. I don't know that for sure. But it just feels like it it would be that way. So um, yeah, not to mention stimulus and tax refunds should be good for retailers. Paysafe Ben MT. So just there's not a lot new on Paysafe today. Today was a big day, but today was the transition day for BFT to Paysafe. 
I think it went down actually like a percent or something. Let's get my screen going here or my internet. There we go. Oh, and by the way, this little uh, market data is delayed. So we might have some problems here. Um, pay safe is P. Unfortunately, I'm going to forget the name of it. P Y S F. Nope. Okay. Let me just do it uh, random here. So BFT turned into PaySafe today. If you're uh, like my ally investing account, I just peeked on it at lunchtime. Um, it was just fl flatline zero um, for, in fact, it had like an order. It was a really wacky setup. Uh, so I'm anticipating that all that stuff gets fixed tomorrow, whatever the uh, official ticker is in your own personal account. So if you're talking about that, just give it time. You didn't lose anything. I was surprised it didn't just switch over, but I'm also not I'm not even worried about it. Like it didn't even send a note to customer service. I think when you log in tomorrow, your BFT says pay safe. When I looked at the stock about two-ish o'clock, it looked like it was trading at 1440, 1450, something like that, which was about 80 cents off of where it closed the day before. Uh, that could be a lot of reasons. Uh, there's a chance that as soon as it turned over, some insider sold. I don't know, it, that's just pure speculation. My rant on PaySafe, which you guys know I'm bullish on, is, is a long-term play. And I think that um, from the standpoint that I'm in, very close to $15, uh, call it $14.50, something like that. I anticipate that over the next six to 12 months, uh, if PaySafe does hit their targets, then it should be pretty close to a $20 stock. And perhaps more importantly, uh, a, a prime buyout target uh, for anybody like PayPal, Square, et cetera. Um, so that's my take on PaySafe. Tomorrow will be more clear. All the tickers should be updated. Hopefully Yahoo's working and uh, go from there. Let's see if I can sign into this thing. Okay. One second. I was going to see if I could show that PaySafe again. Unfortunately, I can't remember what the stupid ticker was and all the ones that I'm typing in are not showing. So anyway, I gotta move on. What do you think about the future of, of Lucid Motor? I, I mentioned it, the recent merger. It's just not a stock for me because it doesn't, it doesn't sell anything yet. The approach, uh, so this is Derek. The approach I'm taking, if I have $1,000 to invest per month, I'm buying 100 on the red days and 25.50 here and there. And I think I'm very similar to Derek right now uh, in, in the fact that he called out the red days on his comment. I wouldn't buy anything on an up day, uh, no almost no matter what it is. I think that you're looking totally for down days. I know I started this um, video off on a positive because we're up a little bit today, but generally speaking, I'm buying on the down days. That's, that's what I prefer to buy. Even if it's down 0.3%, uh, trying to save a couple bucks. All right. Alex the bot says, what do you think about ChargePoint? Um, I didn't look at ChargePoint today, but I'm assuming, let's look at it today. I think my Yahoo's working again. Whatever problem they were having. I was assuming, and here we go, this is the kind of thing that, this is all Biden, I imagine, right? Charge point, this was yesterday, fast charging commission. There's nothing really in here that says like, right, like charge point reinvented the world. This is all the infrastructure plan. So not a great day to buy it, in my opinion, plus 18%. Uh, however, it's not a stock that's on my list, but I think that it's worth watching. Uh, companies like this, and in my case, um, Enphase, 
and anybody solar. So I talk end phase a lot, but it applies to all solar stocks. Um, end phase got a little boost today, 7.68%, because uh, as part of Biden's plan, and perhaps separately, one second here, details of his um, infrastructure spending, Biden's plan, here we go. Biden's plan would give a 10-year extension to tax credits that have been a boon to wind, solar, and other renewable energy projects. So Enphase is up big. It looks like that's not the only one. Uh, First Solar up 2%, Sunrun 5%, Solar Edge 6 Enphase 8 Nova, Sonova Energy up 11%, uh, TAN 2.9%. So uh, again, this is a proposal and it has not been voted on yet, but a 10 year extension of tax credits to the solar industry is good news for Enphase. I don't know if that constitutes 8% up today or whatever it was, but it's good news for me because I was getting killed on that one. Their March 8th low was like 132. But I believe in it long term, so I didn't freak out. I didn't sell a single share. And um, stuff like this type of news for solar, clean energy, charging stations, etc. It looks like we're in for four years of news like this, okay? Where the president, Democrats are going to go out of their way for these um, types of environmental plays and give them the best chance they can to succeed. And with that in mind... Um, I don't specifically know about ChargePoint, but assuming that they are compatible with every type of vehicle uh, that goes on the road um, from an electric standpoint, then yeah. Are they, are they um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hopefully they're in the mix to like get government support and perhaps be a part of a larger infrastructure play. I don't know the answer to that, but those are the kinds of things I'd be looking for. Uh, DCA, we already talked about that. Pablo bought Walgreens at 38. That's a pretty good price because I think we are, you're at 53 today and um, you get the dividend, so not bad. Thoughts on Tattoo Chef? Uh, I've covered it in the past. I've come, when it was on a dip, I sort of came around on it because I think it's a good buyout target. I don't think that Tattooed Chef takes over the world quite as much as um, Jeremy does on financial education. But so let's be fair, Jeremy's made some great picks. So I'm not going to, I'm not bad mouthing him. I just, I'm not as excited about it as he is. However, this little downward momentum, if you didn't have a position, you know, it's sort of like leaking down there. Now, I would figure. Just basic, um, you know, basic intuition tells me that summertime for a frozen food company would be, you know, down a little bit. Not because it sucks, just because people are choosing cookouts, salads, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables are in season. So I'm just guessing frozen foods, the peak sales season is not summertime. Uh, so this could be an opportunity over the summer. Uh, or even over the next 60, 90 days, if this keeps dripping down, to potentially buy some shares. And I've said it before here, my favorite play on Tattooed Chef is somebody like Kraft Heinz buying it. Uh, because Kraft Heinz isn't going to... A big company like that can never launch anything notable like Tattooed Chef, Right. There, you've seen big food, they, you know, they can't barely change the package of Chips Ahoy cookies for 35 years. Um, they're better off buying Tattoo Chef than to try to reinvent it themselves. Uh, so that's what I do like about it. PFE from Pablo is Pfizer. Um, so I like... I don't invest in pharmaceuticals as standalone stock plays, but this would probably be somewhere in my uh, ETF portfolio. Um, maybe it's in QQQ. 
Um, maybe it's in my Vanguard dividend fund. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad play, but I just don't know how much it's going to grow. Don't forget that the government buys the vaccine at wholesale prices that are pre-negotiated. So let's see what analysts think. Year ago, 222. Right now, add a dollar. Next year, subtract 29 cents. Sales this year, plus 50% to 62 billion. Next year, minus 14. Um, so, you know, the problem with that is you've got 2021, all right, to make or break for Pfizer. Now, you do get a dividend in there, but this vaccine is not going to set the company up in this massive trajectory filled on it. And I don't see that uh, posted on analyst picks anyway, on analysts' uh, future recommendations and revenue projections. So I guess with Pfizer, I'd just be careful. Um, probably hard to lose a ton of money in Pfizer with the dividend, but I don't think you're ever going to wake up and Pfizer is going to be, uh, you know, call it $50. Um, maybe it could get to $50. If, they're, if they hit $333, I'll tell you exactly what I think. 333 times about 15 is what I'm going to say. One second. 333 average PE. I'm doing this all off screen, so just going to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them a PE at the end of the year of 15, which is historically higher than normal. That puts you at 49.95. So if I had to pick a price of Pfizer, it would be 49.95 for the end of the fiscal year. Um, that's And then majorly at risk for 2022. So that's the problem. If you hit the 49 and analysts are correct and you drop 14% of your revenue the year after, everybody's looking ahead. So I don't know if you'll get to 49.95 before analysts start turning around and say, yeah, but the next 12 months, right? So that's why I would not um, recommend it. Good company, though, and I'm very thankful that they are helping uh, the world population. Um, so that, that is definitely a bonus. But, you know, kudos and stock picks are not the same thing. Corsair, good buy for three to five years. I'm going to say that I say the same thing about Corsair that I said for Turtle Beach. Um, they're not directly apples to apples. But what I found after two to three years in Turtle Beach, which sells gaming headsets, and I bought it at the end of the Fortnite craze for too much. Then I bought it again on the dip uh, with Corona, which ended up absolutely, you know, exploding their sales. So I got out lucky, plus 100% or so. Um, it's hard to sell peripherals, okay? And the number of peripherals you have to sell to make big, big money is absolutely incredible. And so with Corsair, I am not as excited as some other people are. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad play, and I think the gaming world continues to crank along. But one of the things that really struck me as I kept going along in Turtle Beach that I didn't think about before I bought it was, you know, anybody can make a gaming headset, right? And put it on uh, Jake Paul to get an influencer commercial, and you've got yourself a headset company, right? So um, without knowing the ins and outs of Corsair and how, like, truly patent-pending unique they are, I would say just be cautious in the sense that it may not grow as much as you think it will. do do do, do. Uh, Arsenlan also would like to take your opinion on Alibaba. Um, you know what's interesting about Alibaba, Chinese stocks, which I've mentioned many times, actually like had a um, last thing, last time I went on this rant about Chinese stocks, not a good thing with all the data concerns with the government taking over the consumer data stuff. One zero piece of that 
right now. Alibaba fundamentally looks great, but I would just be super careful um, because the risk is much more to the downside right now until you know exactly what the government has in mind over there with consumer data. Uh, so there's risks at every turn with Baba, unfortunately. Um, Memeo, what? Oh, he's in crypto. Okay, good. Um, buy crypto stock suck, super. What do you think about Humble? Um, I looked into Humble when the rumors were first coming around about it, and I didn't... I didn't feel like the business was mature enough to invest in. So I spent a lot of time on their investor relations pages and reports, which I think you should too. Uh, and I like their concept because they're going um, further down in demographics in terms of they're going international and they're going to basically unbanked, right, population. So I like the concept. I did not see anything there that I thought was better than what Square and PayPal already give me as investors, as an investor in both of those stocks. Uh, 100X on OMI. I assume that's a crypto, and whatever it is, I'm assuming it's not Owens and Miner um, stock, but if it is, great. I know nothing about this one. And if OMI is a crypto, I know even less about it. But good luck to you, Mr. Renz. Brian chimes in, ChargePoint is a great company. Uh, they're undervalued, so maybe there's something there on ChargePoint. You guys certainly got the news today that you wanted out of ChargePoint, which is, you know, Biden recommending uh, an infrastructure play. Uh, ultimately, that would put um, tax benefits tax uh, credits and potentially set up these charging stations. Just make sure that ChargePoint is the company that will benefit the most from it. That's the only thing that I would recommend there. All right, uh, Chess Dad's here, good to see you. I barely have enough free funds to buy a pizza. <laughs> yeah, and I'm actually with you and I think we joked about this on a comment the other day. Um, I'm really like 100 bucks here and there right now, um, I, and I'm hoping to save up more into April, but I am just buying, me personally right now, I'm buying onesie, twosie plays that are already in my portfolio when they're on red days. So example would be like Square last week was inching low 200s, I bought like one or two shares, and I did the same with a bunch of other names. Um, so I'm taking existing portfolio only and just buying uh, to average down in the ones that I think will be around for the long haul. All right. Uh, Rue is big on DraftKings. I'm with you. What do you think about the future of autonomous technology? Lazar, VLDR uh, from Hisham. I, are these the LiDAR systems, I'm guessing? Yeah. So the I don't know these, this company uh, particularly well uh, at all, actually. And lasers right here. The, the big thing I'm going to say about these LiDAR, laser technology, whatever they are, is holy cow, there's a ton more of them than I thought. Um, so... You have Velodyne, talked about Lazar. You have another one that's not in here. I wish it would show. Um, there's three or four publicly traded companies and or SPACs that are working in this LiDAR radar space. So uh, my only concern would be that one or two of them don't make it uh, over the long run. Uh, so just be careful. Was it Li? Hold on. Belladine, Lightwear. And I was trying to come up with what the other stock was. But anyhow, uh, just be careful. There's more competition than you think. And um, I don't know how much 
if Elon Musk knows what he's talking about or not. He seems to think you don't need this. I don't know. I'm out on EVs, man, for a while. Like, I just don't see um, a clear winner. And if you weren't in Tesla prior to the run-up, uh, which would have been, you know, if you weren't in Tesla before, I don't know, October or something like that without looking at their chart, I'd be leery about getting in now uh, because some of the shine is wearing off uh, in the short term. So just be careful. And then, you know, if you want to get in, but you don't want to buy Tesla, you'd have to start thinking about an electric car ETF. And I know they're out there. I don't own one. Um, I'm resting on the laurels that uh, chips, Google's, things like that are going to benefit uh, a lot from the EV revolution. And that's kind of where my money is on the whole thing. Uh, certainly, there'll be lots of places to make money. You know, charge point we talked about today, Tesla's already made people bazillions of dollars. And uh, but just be careful because not everyone's going to make it in this one. So go for best of breed would be my two cent uh, argument for you. And whatever company you have, make sure that they can scale. Right. So if, if ChargePoint, just to bring them up, if they got an order tomorrow for whatever, 10,000 stations, can they even do it? Right. Obviously, they can't make it tomorrow. But is it in their investor report that they can see that future and how they're going to ramp up production? Because production's getting hard in this world with chip stocks, etc. So I'm a big fan of Taiwan Semiconductor. I'm a, you know, I own that stock and I couldn't be more bullish about the news in chips. There are none, right? Excuse me, there are none. So find a chip, uh, there's a million of them. Find a chip stock you like and you believe in at a fair price, buy, the, buy your favorite. I don't even know if you can lose at this point. Uh, because everything is uh, being so, everything is so out of stock. Like if you like AMD and for whatever reason, because you play games and whatnot, go buy AMD, go buy NVIDIA, go buy TSM, go buy Intel. I'm just not sure you can lose in chip stocks right now. Um, you know, pick on a red day, make sure that, you know, you're not playing over historical amounts. Um, but it's another great way to play EVs, in my opinion. Do, 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 do. Pay safe we covered earlier. Not stock related, but what pop characters do you have behind you? I've got a Volt Boy, Master Chief from Fallout and Halo. Um, so those guys, I have to turn and look. So Mr. Monopoly... Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation, uh, Bobby Axelrod front, I guess it'd be front right for you, Bobby Axelrod from Billions, if you haven't watched that show, uh, it's a little watered down here in season four or five, whatever they're in, but literally get your free Showtime <laughs> subscription on Amazon for like 30 days, watch Billions, um, uh, first and second season, easy win. Um, Don Draper next to the Mad Men DVD. That's nothing. And Biggie Smalls over here. So those were just a few. I tried to brighten up the office a little bit. I really just used to have a wall back here and a um, what are, whatever board, dry erase board. Uh, so just trying to kind of whatever, fancy it up. Those DVD boxes, which is kind of dumb, right? Because nobody watches DVDs. But I found those at a used bookstore, and they're like 3 or $4 each. So I was like, ah, eh, I'm just going to buy them. They're all like financial related. I'm just going to buy them and use them as decoration. So it's like Wolf of Wall Street, Mad Men, uh, Wall Street, stuff like that. Uh, so I thought it was fun, but... Chestad has had his glory days with Tesla. Currently have none, but a moderate amount on GM. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I I wouldn't go be so bold as to say sell Tesla, uh, especially if you've made it this far, 
But man, if I was up 300% in any stock, I don't care what it is, particularly over a 12, 15 month period, you better believe that I'm selling some of it. Uh, there's no way to think that that will continue on unless you're inventing oxygen or something. Um, so I think it's great. I didn't ever think Tesla would, would do what it did. I was certainly on the naysayer camp. Now I'm a, um, I, I believe in the company more. I also believe that the company has reached a point, at least in analyst projections, that they have EPS growth uh, projected. So this is a big thing, and, I, and I'll show you real quick. Tesla two years ago versus Tesla today. Uh, so the, the price part is almost irrelevant. Um, so last 12 months, 60, I don't know why it always has to highlight everything. 64 cents in the last 12 months on EPS. But check this out. Technically, their EPS last year, this might be non-GAAP, um, but it was 224. Next year, 414. Next year, 560. Um, now, $5.60 rolled into 667 is still a freaking expensive stock. No way around it. Uh, but this is great growth. This is something I can wrap my head around and, uh, you know, give kudos to Tesla holders who saw this basically two years ago when it had no EPS. And I wasn't even sure if the company would last. Uh, if you're new to Tesla, it, 2018 or so, man, I'm telling you it wasn't pretty uh, watching the news with them. And But they did it, so kudos. And then on revenue... 31 billion to 48 billion to 62 billion, 52% growth projected this year, 30% growth. Um, so fundamentally, Tesla has more fundamentals now that investors can wrap their heads around. Um, it's not fundamentally cheap, but it has anchors. And I think that that's the big difference between some of the SPACs and other companies that are coming out you're buying a story and there's not a ton of information to either prove that story is right or prove that story is wrong. We don't have it. And it might be actually minor bad news for Tesla that they have real fundamentals now because I just did the thing where I looked at the chart and if it was $5.60 EPS at the end of 2022, then your PE today is well over 100. And that's a two year ahead forward PE. So definitely pricey. I mean, go look at GM and Volkswagen. They're not in that range. Um, so that could end up being a negative to Tesla, even though they're doing awesome things. So just keep that in mind. That's why I say if I was up 300%, for sure, I'm taking some of that money. Um, after a 12 month hold, you know, get into capital gains tax uh, bracket with that money and, um, you know, do other things with it. All right. So, all right, guys, it looks like that's all the questions. It's also five o'clock, so I'm going to hop. But thank you to everybody who uh, came out today. It's always good to talk to you. And uh, I'll have another one of these very soon. So have a great day. We'll see you.